In this tutorial we're going to actually do a quality render of our scene and start making it look um, a lot more realistic if we can. First of all if we come down here to the buttons window and uh, we go into the world buttons if the put your mouse over the button it'll highlight and say world buttons with the pop-up you'll find that under the materials section if it's not showing and here you'll see there's a slider that you've already seen for changing the colors now that's actually the color that our sky is at the moment if you like if we adjust that we we'll want to get it just into a normal sort of light blue sky type of color play around with the sliders and it's the red green and blue sliders which you may have probably used in other programs and also in other parts of blender now that looks like a kind of a nice blue sky color so um, if I scroll this screen up and do a render so you can see how that's looking and there we are it's it's got a light blue it's probably a little bit too light in fact I it doesn't really stand out against the uh, we've added a blue light to the scene as you remember earlier which is cast on some of those buildings and it would look a bit better if that blue was uh, a little bit contrasted to that so we'll adjust the slider and just make it a little bit darker you'll see the large this the small stripe and the large square to the left shows you the color and that that I like that a bit better um, I've got a contrast now between the blue light which was shining on the buildings and the blue of the sky um, that's just my personal choice you may have a different choice I mean it's about creating art and not necessarily creating a photographic effect that we're interested in okay the other thing I want to show you in the again in the world buttons is there's a button here for mist and as the name suggests that will put a mist into the scene and then you've got three sliders down here we're only going to concern ourselves with um, the first two which is for the start position of the mist I'm going to set that to 0.16 and the um, it's the density of the mist there is also one for height you can actually simulate the bottom one there is for height you can simulate a mist which is denser at the bottom and lighter at the top which can be quite useful okay let's go up and render this now and have a look see what it's looking like there you can see already it's starting to look slightly more realistic because some of the background has dropped away into the blue haze there um, still got a long way to go with this don't worry about the fact that those buildings look blocky and square and um, they look square obviously because they're square buildings but they look blocky at the edges where the um, what they call the jaggies in computer speak that will be corrected soon I'm going to change the view here all I'm doing remember is just dragging grab G to grab the camera select the camera and grab it's pointing itself towards the empty just to get a different view along the street um, see it's still not you'll notice that there's an absence of shadows and we're going to correct that in a little while and while we're talking about rendering uh, rendering the view I just want to show you a couple of things um, down here in the where am I not in the texture I want to go into the scene buttons you see the little picture frame there the scene and if you look down whoops to me to move that you look down here under the render section you'll notice it's showing set to 50% 50% of what? Well if you come over to this side where it's got the format you'll see there is actually the size of our frame it's currently set to 64480 uh, which is which Blender defaults to which is VGA resolution so for example if you want to see that rendered at full size to get a better idea of how it's looking click on the 100% button and press render F12 to render or click that large render button and it's probably not very clear on this screen capture I'll um, refresh that I think and you see you've got a a larger view but you know there's not a lot of detail in there we know I know there's it's not a detailed scene but um, it'd be nice wouldn't it if there were more shadows and if the um, or any shadows <laughs> and if the um, buildings were slightly reflective as if they were made of glass or had glass windows in them so that's what we're going to work on in a minute now you'll notice here the render renderer is set to the blender internal which is what we're going to use this button here is the ray trace button ray tracing as the name suggests being the simulation of light within a scene it's more processor intensive when things move along as you will find out but let's render now and mm, doesn't look any different put the ray trace button on nothing's really changed um, this is where a lot of people um, fall down with it they think they just got to do is put the ray trace button on and you will have full ray tracing it's not quite that straightforward but it's not hard we select our city come down to the materials button 
and you'll see the button there that says add new just to highlight there look we are in the materials section add new immediately the buttons window down here changes and we've got ah familiar sliders for color so let's choose the color of the material and this is going to be the color the basic color the base color of these city blocks um, I want to get a kind of a bluish greenish kind of color um, something slightly different to the environment that we've got but um, so that you get differences in variations in color there um, if you come over to this side you've got um, shaders and also a button that says mirror and transparency and we are going to there's a button here that's blue not highlighted we're going to press that again it won't do anything until we actually adjust this slider the ray mirror amount now over to the left you see the um, the panel there is indicating how much reflection that slider is actually going to create if we come up now and render the scene you'll notice it takes a little longer to render and mm, yes there's a few more things going on you can see reflections there almost you know in some of the buildings um, still not not a huge amount going on there that's because we still haven't got shadows um, that's again a setting within blender and uh, it should be the same for many other 3d programs I'm sure whether lights the individual lights have to have a setting change so highlight one of our lamps in the scene one of the three lamps and you'll see here uh, under the lamp settings window there's a button there for ray shadow so obviously we want to have ray traced shadows enabled for that light Now this is quite handy because you may not want to do all lights you may want some just to add light and and you play around with how many lights and which ones are, have ray trace shadows set for the simple reason that is to do with render time if you had um, I don't know two dozen lights in the scene which you could have and they were all set to ray trace shadows it would slow down the rendering considerably you'll notice it took a little longer to render but wow what a difference it's made we've now got something that looks more like a, a realistic city you've got shadows and of course where the areas become dark you've then got the reflections of those shadows in the buildings so even with our fairly simple scene you start to get more complexity I mentioned earlier about the um, jaggies this button here OSA over sampling we need to enable that does a little algorithm which takes out the stepped edges of angled slopes um, by putting a little gray area in, in in between the pixels so that the edges of objects look more precise and don't look jaggy um, for a more detailed description research it on the internet <laughs> Um, now the render now 100% you see it does look a lot better um, now basically you can drive your camera in the way that we did in the earlier tutorial just basically select your camera uh, grab it and move around this virtual city and take photographs with your camera remember you could do when you save an, an image don't forget files save as um, save image as and don't forget to put the file extension JPG on the end because Blender doesn't do that automatically and choose the folder that you save them into and review that tutorial at the beginning the if you which was actually the first tutorial if you've forgotten any of that um, you very easily get embedded in a building like I am at the moment but I'm trying to get just between two buildings um, I'll render this 100% I'm cheating a little bit I'm pausing um, so you don't have to wait for my render to complete don't think I've got a racing computer here I'm actually pausing the video um, it takes a few seconds to render um, your machine might be faster than mine Here's another scene, um, slightly more of an aerial view. And I'll scroll around the image because it's actually full 644.80. Um, if you want to do a very high res, just put the resolution up to whatever you require, and the image that you produce can be used then for anything you like. Remember, it is your image, um, it belongs to you, whatever you create within Blender. You're free to use in any way you like within your other applications for creating whatever you like. We'll talk more about that in the later tutorials. Um, here I am just flying around the scene choosing a scene to render um, and in the next tutorial we're actually going to do a bit more of this but we're going to make an actual AVI video we're going to make a animated fly-through video which is another strength of Blender <laughs>